untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to my first standard gameplay video with Kamigawa Neon Dynasty and let's jump right into it here with a mono blue artifact deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon built around Mech Titan Core, the 2 mana 2-4 two artifact vehicle with a crew cost of 2 and we can pay 5 mana, exile Mech Titan Core and 4 other artifact creatures and or vehicles we control to create Mech Titan, a legendary 10-10 a construct artifact creature token with flying, vigilance, trample, a life Link and haste. It's all colors, and when that token leaves the battlefield for any reason, we can return all the cards exiled with Mech Titan Core, except for the core itself, to the battlefield tapped under their owner's control. So the Tenten token is going to be the primary win condition in the deck, and we've got a ton of ways to help us find the Mech Titan Core and assemble all the necessary pieces. So let's take a look at the author cards in the deck, starting out with our one drops, where we've got a Moonsnare Prototype, which is an artifact that can tap alongside an untapped artifact or creature we control to add colorless mana to our mana pool. So this can turn all our cheap artifact creatures into mana elves, which is quite powerful. And then it also has a channel ability for 5 mana, letting us discard Moonsnare Prototype. And then the owner of target Nonland Permanent puts it on the top or bottom of their library. So if we draw a prototype in the late game and we don't need the mana anymore, then we can use it as a nice removal spell that's also uncounterable because it's a channel ability and not a spell we're casting. Then we've got some cheap 1 mana artifact creatures with a network disruptor, a 1 1 flyer that when it enters the battlefield can tap target permanent, Silver Raven from Forgotten Realms, a 1 1 flyer that when it enters lets us scry one, and Iron Apprentice, a 0 0 that enters with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and when it dies we can move that counter to a different creature. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of a Reckoner Bankbuster, a 4-4 artifact vehicle with a crew cost of 3. It enters with 3 charge counters on it and we can pay 2 mana and tap it and remove one of those charge counters to draw a card. So very reminiscent of Maze Mind Tome. And then if there's no charge counters left instead of sacrificing it, we get to create a treasure token and a 1-1 colorless pilot creature token that essentially can crew 3 so it can crew the Bankbuster so it can start attacking. Then of course a full playset of Mech Titan Core, and 4 copies of Automated Artificer, a 1-3 artifact creature that can tap to add colorless, that we can only spend to activate an ability or cast an artifact spell, so it can also help ramp into the activated ability on Mech Titan Core, or maybe help pay for the Bank Buster, so there's a ton of synergy there. And then we also have two copies of the Reality Chip, an 04 legendary artifact creature that lets us look at the top card of our library at any time. And then it can also reconfigure for two and a blue, in which case it attaches to one of our creatures as an equipment and then it ceases to be a creature. And as long as the Reality Chip is attached to a creature, we may play lands and cast spells from the top of our library. So it turns into kind of a future sight effect, which is incredibly powerful and will help us assemble the Mech Titan core and all its pieces. Then at 3 mana we've got 2 copies of Covert Technician, a 2-4 artifact creature human ninja with ninjutsu for 1 and a blue, so we can return an unblocked attacker we control to our hand to put this card onto the battlefield from our hand tapped and attacking. And we've got 8 great ninjutsu enablers between Disruptor and Silver Raven that we can then pick back up, cheat Technician into play, and when it deals combat damage to a player, we may put an artifact card with mana value less than or equal to that damage from our hand onto the battlefield. So that we'll be able to put any of our 2 drops in play and give us a nice mana advantage and help assemble all those pieces for the Mech Titan core. Also means we can sneak the core into play without it getting countered, thanks to Ninjutsu, which is another advantage. And then at 4 mana we're trying out two copies of Tazeret, Betrayer of Flesh, the new planeswalker from Kamigawa. Says the first activated ability of an artifact we activate each turn costs two generic mana less to activate. So great synergy with the Bankbuster as well as the Mech Titan core. Can even use the Bankbuster in the opponent's turn to make use of it and then we can still use a different ability at a discount in our turn as well. And then the plus one lets us draw two cards and then discard two cards unless we discard an artifact card. We can minus two to permanently turn one of our artifacts into a 4-4 creature. And the minus six gives us an emblem saying whenever an artifact we control becomes tapped we get to draw a card which can also be a game winning effect. 
And then last but not least, 4 copies of a Reality Heist, a 7 mana instant, but it costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control, so we can routinely cast it for just double blue, and then we get to look at the top 7 cards of our library, and reveal up to 2 artifact cards to put into our hand. So very powerful card effect that will help us find the Mech Titan core and all the missing pieces. And then very important in the mana base is that we get to play 4 copies of Treasure Vault because we're a monocolor deck, as opposed to maybe a blue-white deck, which I also considered splashing for Ingenious Smith, which could also be a nice fit for this deck. But Treasure Vault, a nice inclusion as an artifact land, so it can enable various artifact synergies, like discounting our reality highs by one. We can discard it to Tesseret's plus one ability, so we can keep more spells in hand, or we can even turn it into a 4-4 creature with the minus two. And then we also have the one copy of Soaring City as a legendary land that also has a channel ability that can be used as interaction. And then 17 basic islands could also try out the Search Hacker mech at 4 mana for additional interaction, but I just want to keep the combo plan as lean and mean as possible. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? Yeah, it looks good. We could even ninjutsu the Technician on turn 2, put a Bank Buster in play. And all these artifacts combined with a Treasure Vault could cast a very cheap Reality Heist to hopefully find our Mech Titan core. So if we can ninjutsu Apprentice, this hand's gonna be amazing. If not, it's still okay. But we'll make it a little bit less explosive. And we're on the play, so a lot more likely that we can connect. Then of the bugbear, put into red deck. Passes. Well, let's hope they don't play around ninjutsu. And for one mana, they won't be able to deal four damage. So mission accomplished. And then Bangbuster probably over the reality chip. So we're off to a very nice start. A 2-4 on the play. And opponent did have the play with fire, which in hindsight they probably wanted to use on the Apprentice, but lots of new cards means people don't quite know what to play around yet. Adversary hits us for 2. Alrighty. So what's next? I can attack with Technician, put the Reality Chip into play. And then play Apprentice, and then I can still Reality Heist at instant speed. And we've got an 0-4 blocker, so an amazing start. Stormseeker, we can just block here. So we'll just take two damage. And find probably Treasure Vaults and Prototype could make more mana or offer some interaction. Another Reality Heist on top, which I could draw with the Bang Buster and then still play. Or we could just keep the Bang Buster as something we could crew. Although I'm kind of into just drawing, casting Reality Heist, and then using the Technician to potentially put something else in play. That's a little bit more expensive. Okay, find... I guess Artificer and another Technician. And we can keep the Apprentice on defense. Alright, and then at some point we can reconfigure Reality Chip. Still haven't found our Mech Titan core, but we should be able to find one soon. Oh, 
Also could have considered putting the Disruptor in play instead of the Artificer, so we can set up our next Ninjutsu. But our opponent's just turning their creature sideways. Now they could have a Burn Spell to finish off Reality Chip, but so be it. We'll double block here. Seems fine, still have plenty of artifacts to eventually transform our Mech Titan core. And then if I put an extra counter here, I could put three drops in play, not that I have any three mana artifacts. So, I guess we'll put it on Artificer. And a Rabbit Battery, the new equipment. Okay, is it time to reconfigure Reality Chip? What else do we want to do here? Can still draw with Bang Buster, or maybe keep it back as a 4-4 blocker. Ton of options. So this turn, maybe just play Disruptor. And then I'm gonna pass, keep up both the channel ability as well as being able to crew with the Bang Buster to block. And then next turn we might set up the Reconfigure on Reality Chip to start drawing. And as soon as we get our Mech Titan core, it should be game over once we get a hidden for 10 points of lifelink damage. Monorant's not going to be able to deal with it. The Ogre Head Helm can maybe refresh their hands if they can connect. So lots of these new creatures that are also equipment. Haven't seen the 4 mana Raichu yet, but I expect that to be my opponent's deck as well. So a 3-3 Helm, they could give it one extra power. So that seems like a good target for Prototype. And, uh, yeah. Let's send that packing. So time to reconfigure, I think so. Attach it to the Technician, maybe. Can play this off the top. And then I can play another Bank Buster if I want to. Or I could draw with the original one. Or keep it back to maybe crew. Yeah, I guess we'll uh, hang back. And then I can both crew and draw with the original Bang Buster and maybe trade it for a 4-powered creature. Put and replace the helm. They can re-equip. Give plus one power. And then I think the plan is indeed to crew the Bang Buster. And still draw a card with it on the way out. Alright, so we can start playing lands of the top if we find any. Prototype, I guess we'll play for free here. Apprentice for one mana. Another Bang Buster. And yeah, this is just an insurmountable amount of card advantage for the opponent to fight through. Tesseret we can play. I guess we'll keep the flyer on defense just in case. Tazeret can start plussing, or turn something into a 4-4, just to play it safe. I'll pass, and then I can still draw more with Bang Buster, using our two Artificers. And eventually we'll find our Mech Titan core, but it's not like we're in a hurry. And our opponent explodes, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and hand looks pretty decent. Can play turn one Disruptor to set up Ninjutsu on two. As opposed to Prototype first. Probably no need to tap the Disruptor itself, but... I wasn't gonna block with it if the opponent had a haste creature anyway. Okay, 
So attack ninja to put a bangbuster in. Seems good. Probably have to play the Soaring City as a land since we're a bit stuck on blue mana otherwise. Opponent Black White with a Professor of Symbology. Well, they're gonna have to maybe chum block the technician here if they don't want us to put stuff in play for free. So what's the plan? Can draw with the Bank Buster first. In case I find something more expensive to put in play with the technician. Um, or I can attack first and see if they block before making that decision. Alright, opponent takes it, so in that case I think I will draw. Land is fine. And I can put a Disruptor in. Um, or a Prototype, both are fine. Wouldn't be able to play the other prototype since I can only make colors mana here. But yeah, two mana reality heist coming up, so that's exciting. Opponent fetched up Necrotic Fumes, could eventually exile our 1010 Mech Titan, but not before we get a hidden. Professor attacks. Think I'll take it. Oh, and there's our Mech Titan, perfect. Can Reality Heist first as well, not that it really matters. Send the team. And then we can put the Mech Titan in. Not that our opponent's playing any counter spells, but still the most mana efficient play. And then we can both Reality Heist and draw with a Bank Buster. So I probably don't need to do that now. And then we've got Prototype to make an extra mana, so we'll have the five necessary for transforming Mech Titan. And then if they answer the token, we still get a fresh Bank Buster with three new search counters on it, so that's not too bad. Opponent plays Night Twitch. Mag Titan is all colors, so it cannot be exiled by Vanishing Verse, which is nice. So let us draw with Bangbuster first. I guess we could technically even uh, tap the core to pay for this. Prototype we can also just keep as a. Uh, a removal spell at 5 mana. Okay. So let's see, 5, 6 mana. So I can play Raven and one prototype as a mana artifact first. Reality chip on top seems fine. And then tap these for mana. Transform Mech Titan. And hope there's no removal. So here we have it. Mech Titan assembled. So yeah, the deck feels pretty good when it all kind of comes together like this. Opponent got rid of Eye Twitch, so now they cannot cast the Necrotic Fumes unless they've got another creature to exile. But I imagine they'll have a different answer to Mech Titan. Blood on the Snow to destroy it. And bring back a creature. But our opponent could still be dead here, as we get to tap the Eye Twitch with Disruptor. And then we can just crew the Bankbuster to attack for lethal. 
And that does it. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and what do we think of this hand? Yeah, it's okay. Not particularly exciting, but uh, should be playable up against white aggro. So we'll play a Raven. And another Bank Buster. It's tempting to keep, although I'm gonna struggle to crew it, and I don't know if I need it for additional card advantage, since we already have one plus a Tesseret. So I might want to look for additional lands and eventually our Mech Titan. Turn to Aspirant, not what we like to see, especially when it's the original Aspirant putting a counter on a creature right away. So next I could go Prototype into Artificer. And then we could play maybe a Tesseret next turn. Although it's going to be under quite a bit of pressure. Apparition Exiles Artificer. So I could still play Tesseret, but whatever I turn into an artifact is going to be tapped, so I won't be able to necessarily block with it. So instead I probably want to go Bank Buster plus another Artificer. Adeline is going to increase the pressure even more. Although we can at least block the 1-1 one -one token. And there's my Mech Titan, but is it too little too late? So I can play Mech Titan. Play Apprentice. I can even draw with the Bank Buster. And then next turn, I guess technically we could transform if we're still alive and the opponent doesn't mess with anything. So yeah, maybe it's not too late. Because we have the one extra mana from Prototype and Artificer. Ooh, Adversary pumping the team. That might be a little bit too much for us to handle. Because I'm going to have to chum block here. So yeah, I don't think there's any way for us to still uh, transform the mech next turn, even if we're still alive. So I could block the 2-2. Two -two, and then I need to chump chump and I'm still taking 8. So yeah, a little bit too aggressive from the white deck here. Let's see what's on top. Reality Heist would have been nice. So yeah, against these white aggro decks, possible we need a bit more interaction. Splashing white for Portable Hole could be one way to approach the matchup. But of course it's going to have some adverse effects for the rest of the deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And what do we think of our hand? It's okay. Um, a little bit slow to start discounting Reality Heist. Double Bank Buster, so we don't have any of our mana cards like Prototype or the uh, two mana Artificer. But we do have a Scry with Raven, so I guess we'll try it. And then look for additional lands. Artifact land would be nice. Or one of the mana cards. No shortage of card advantage here. Turn one Paladin class, so hopefully not another white aggro deck. Islands, I guess we already drew a land, so probably okay to bottom. Green white, maybe enchantments, yep, as we see, turn two naturalist. And we're just gonna play a bank buster. Hit for one. Next turn, probably want to play another one plus Disruptor, so we can start casting Heist for 
cheaper and then uh, that's one way for us to find our mech. Artificer is also tempting. So how about we just go Artificer Disruptor instead. And then we can crew with the Bankbuster to hit them for four. So they don't drop the Sigarda Splendor. Kami of Transience picks up a plus one counter here. And a borrow time can exile my Bankbuster. Another Raven. So I can play Raven, Bankbuster, and then Reality Heists. And Islands we don't need. And then since we already played our land, might as well heist at instant speed. And threaten the crew on Bankbuster as opposed to hitting for two. Since their opponent's gonna draw the card anyway. Alright, so we gotta find our mech as soon as possible. And hope there's no more borrowed time. Opponent levels up. They still can't attack with their naturalists, so they're just gonna hit for five. And I guess I forgot about paladin class making heist more expensive, so we'll just be drawing with the bankbuster instead. So there was still a reason to main phase, but that's okay. So prototype we could use as removal. And I guess it also gets around the Paladin class tax. Or I can just Reality Heist here to try and find my mech as soon as possible. I think that's fine. Did not find my mech. Did find another Bank Buster plus maybe a Treasure Vault to keep hitting my land drops. And then I can play a Reality Chip. And then we can still draw with the other Bank Buster. And maybe next turn we can reconfigure if needed. Another Kami. And a wedding announcement. Pretty good. So we'll take six. Aha, there's the Mech Titan. Perfect. So we might still get there in time. So we can play the mech and then still transform it here. That seems fine. Hit for 10, gain 10. And our opponent does have a paladin class, they can still uh, level up, so we have to be a little careful. Another Paladin class. They're gonna give their creature double strike, so if they attack with a team, are we dead? I guess we still gain 10. So it's gonna be close. So 9-9, nine, nine, double strike. So that hits us for 9, we go to 6. And then we take another 14, so 23 total, but we would be at 25, so we would survive. So yeah, this looks good. Alright, and now we've got our prototype as interaction to keep up. So we can hit for 10, 
And, uh, yeah, probably not going to do anything else. And really hope there's no borrowed time waiting in the wings. Oof, borrowed time. Yeah, not what we wanted to see. Although we can use the prototype to get rid of it before it actually gets rid of my titan. So is that a play? I think so. Prototype to the rescue. Opponent levels up. Attacks. So 7-7 seven, seven double strike. I guess that still would trade for the 10-10. If I block it with a reality chip, then we would survive since we only take 10. So yeah, that seems good. Opponent draws a card. And yeah, the mech can cross the finish line. What a close game. Oof. So, yeah, we got to see two cool new decks in action. So, perfect way to kick off this new standard season. So, while we might still be an underdog against the mono white aggro deck, if we've got an explosive start with lots of mana ramp, we might still be able to get our 10 10 token going in time to stabilize. But of course, there's still answers out there. So probably not the best deck in standard right now, but certainly doing lots of cool new things. And hopefully you get to see those new cards in action. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Make sure to join the Patreon if you want to decide on which deck should get featured next. But for now, want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.